Hey guys, what's going on? Wayne Grayson here for Utility Expo. We're here on the 2021 show floor, the outside show floor anyway, and we're here at the Vermeer booth, and right behind me here is the new VXT300. Now, this is an eight-yard vac truck um, that Vermeer has done actually a lot of work on. Now, this is actually replacing the VXT8. That was the previous generation of this truck, and, and Vermeer, like I said, has done a bunch of different changes and upgrades to this machine to make it even better. Now, let's go talk to an expert to see what those changes are. Okay, guys, so we're standing here with Jake. Jeffords of Vermeer. We're standing here in front of the VXT300. Now, this is an all new VAC truck from Vermeer, an eight yard VAC truck that is actually replacing the VXT8. Jake, take us through some of the kind of like key highlights that we need to know on this machine. Yeah, so the great part about this unit is uh, it's at our new facility coming out of South Carolina. Uh, we were in the last 30 plus years in a 40,000 square foot facility. We just tripled the size of that with plenty of, of acreage to pull to add onto the building. But talk a little bit more about the product. Really great proven components from the VXT8 that we pulled over to the 300. But your, your key specs, six inch boom, 3,500 CFM, 10 gallon per minute water pump, because you really want to make sure that slurries up the mud before you suck the mud up into the tank. Eight yard spoil tank, so you're going to keep that nice amount of spoil that you can keep on the job, stay on the job and stay more efficient, but also not put you overweight. So those are some of the key specs that you really want to look at when you're talking about a truck. That's what the 300 stands for is the 3000 CFM class. So we wanted to keep that in range for our rest of our machines and it makes it easy for us to push forward from there. All right, now we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit more about some of the individual upgrades on this. So let's go ahead and take a, take a, take a walk around the machine. Sounds good, let's do it. All right guys, so we're, we're standing here in front of the, the, the front axle of this truck. And as Jake mentioned just a little bit ago, um, one of the upgrades with the VXT300 over the VXT8 that it, that it replaces is a better weight distribution of this tank throughout the entire kind of chassis of the truck. So Jake, take us through that. Yeah, so we partnered up with Kenworth. This is a T370 model. And the way that the model works out, it's a very lightweight chassis. And um, as you were talking about, it's it's really important to keep that, that distribution very simple and weighed out for the whole truck. So front axle, 16,000 pounds. The tag axle or the pusher axle is 10. And then the back tandems are 40. So when you, when you pull all that together, it really makes a lightweight truck, but it gives you the ability to hold that whole eight yards that we talked about in the spool tank. So the, the big piece of that puzzle is how do we engineer the tank to be long and skinny to where you're using and maximizing that front axle's weight? Because most of the vacs in the, in the industry have a very heavy back end, and that's where weight tickets come into play, not being able to cross the, the bridge laws like you need to. So being able to have our weight distributed evenly across the whole chassis is a really big piece of the puzzle. Yeah, and you mentioned too, kind of some of the complexity whenever it comes into to designing around some of those laws and really trying to be kind of proactive on the part of the customer. You don't want them to, you know, uh, you know, just put the truck to work and then end up with a ticket. Um, so just because the truck can do it doesn't mean that you necessarily it's necessarily a good idea. So, yeah, you, you mentioned kind of designing more around kind of like the, the federal mandates yeah. rather than the individual kind of state laws, right? Yeah, each state has a different mandate depending on the chassis spread and the, the way the pusher sits in the back and what the distance between the, the tandems are. So what we looked for is we don't know what's going to go in the spoil tank on a customer's job, but we're going to get you the, the best spread that we can, the best distribution that we can. And, and right now we've got a really good uh, layout of this truck to where we believe that this will hit those federal bridge laws. We really feel like that this truck hits the marks that we need to hit and, uh, and gives us the ability to, be, to have the customer be out there and be safe. All of the weight laws aside, Safety is the big thing, right? Yeah. That's why the laws are there. Yeah. And we're trying our best to build that truck and lay out the chassis to keep us keep us all safe on the road. You know, you mentioned that that we're, we're basically looking at a, a Kenworth T370 here. Um, now with this VXT300, one of the bigger upgrades over the VXT8 is gonna be this new PTO that you guys have uh, put on this machine. Now, from, from what I understand, this thing is easier to engage, it's easier to maintenance, the training uh, kind of process of getting new guys on this truck and get them going is a lot easier. Take, take us through all of that. Yeah, so when the engineering team looked at this this truck and how we were gonna take the next step in it. Uh, really one of the big pieces was how we engage and how we operate and how we communicate between the chassis and the back end. So over the years, you know, support is one of the biggest things 
that you look at when you buy a machine. You want to be able to feel comfortable that this type, this machine is going to be supported by the dealer. But there's also a part where this is made by two different people. Now, we're not a truck manufacturer, no, never want to claim to be. Uh, we're the VAT guys, right? Right, exactly. But yeah. we have to have a relationship with the truck guys. So what the engineering team did is they did a single point CAN bus connection. Okay. So this box here is very simple, but what you are able to do is you're able to, to press this switch and turn electricity and power off to the whole vac, right, okay. the back side of it. So the great part about that and what the key feature is, is when I want to troubleshoot the chassis, right. I can turn the power off and it's not feeding anything to the chassis. It's not messing with any signals. We don't dig in the dash. It's just a single CAN bus connection and it makes it easier for that, that separation. Awesome. Um, the good part about it for, for our dealers is we can focus on what we know. Right, yeah. Kenworth can focus on what they know. Exactly. Experts and how we how we talk to each other and work with each other, it's a big part. In this case, we're able to crank the truck and then operate everything off the back end off of a remote. Engaging, disengaging water, the hot box, everything, all the operations that we'll talk about, it's very simple to operate, very simple to train. and. Now that's one of the big things the engineering team focused on is how can we make it easier to hand over to the next guy, hand over to the next guy and get them feeling comfortable and being productive. Yeah, one more thing about the PTO. Oh, yeah. um, it's, a, it's a function that we're able to, since we're doing a side PTO versus a T case, we're able to actually park the machine, crank the machine up, engage the PTO, get full suction on the boom, dig a pothole, and then the next pothole that you need, you can jump back in the truck. If you keep it under six miles an hour, the PTO stays engaged. Nice. And then cool. you're able to keep the boom and move pothole to pothole. Now, obviously, we're looking at safety aspects, you know, power lines, trees, houses, you know, sure. anything that you're you're going to get in the way of. But <laughs> but at the end of the day, you want to be able to keep, to be productive. And that that keeping that PTO engaged and still being able to move the truck is a very key thing to be able to it's make huge time saving make right? sure to save time but even then if you do need to go over six miles an hour you need to need to move a little bit further you can still just hit a button on a remote instead of going into the cab making an individual key sequence very very simple to operate nice. and for the rental market yeah that's that's a big so big deal so our dealers will rent these trucks um, in the future and being able to make sure that that part of the, the truck is still safe and reliable, it's a key, key point. So other parts of, of, around this area is really your main filtration. So your filtration on this truck is three stages. When the material comes into the tank, that's stage number one, your heavies hit the ground, your air comes through and your lights are pulled into these two dual cyclonic, cyclonic filtration system. So the dual, dual cyclones have a canister on the bottom. Anything that doesn't go through the cyclones and move on to the blower gets caught in this canister. So you're able to clean this canister out. What we want to do with this final stage filter is we want to keep it to where we can clean it out easily and protect the blower. So this is the final stage to keep that blower safe. The blower beside the chassis is one of the, one of the most expensive components on the truck. And if we can keep that blower safe by that two micron filter, it's able to, to keep the air running through the blower and continuously moving, and it makes it easy for the operator and easy and longevity for the, for the overall truck. One other piece here is our four-way valve. This, this gives this truck reverse pressure. So what, again, that gives you is the ability to be productive, right? So say we're out in the field, we get a clog up in our boom, and we need to get rid of that, that, that clog we can charge the machine up from the remote and turn reverse pressure off and push it out the boom and then go back to work. So you'll hear a theme over all of these. Yeah. It's very, very conscious of being productive and getting those operators back in the field. You know, uh, most utility companies, if they own a truck, they're trying to make sure they're getting everything they can out of that yep. truck in terms of productivity yep. to where, you know, the potholing is paying, you know, necessarily to keep the drill going. Yep. Um, from a rental standpoint, you brought that up too. Um, so approachability is key in that, especially if it's a truck that maybe, you know, they're not, they're not using that thing a, 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 a whole lot or they're not used to it. But also from a rental standpoint, if it makes more sense to just rent on the occasions yep. that you need to, to rent, 
you know, it's, it, it has rental and kind of like making that that connection to the, the machine a little bit more comfortable for guys who aren't necessarily like used to running it a lot. Hey, you know, how, how much is that factored into kind of some, some of your more recent development design decisions? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a training wheel set, right? Yeah. So if we can get the, the guys that have used trailers for years to go and get the jobs and feel comfortable operating a larger piece of equipment and really get their hands on something like this, they, they're gonna see the productivity. Yeah. They're gonna see that advantage. So rental's a great point, uh, but you don't wanna have a machine that's super complicated no. to where you're in and out of the truck, you're, you're pressing a bunch of buttons, you wanna be able to say, and you'll see on the remote, it's a red, yellow, green. It's it's that simple that we try to make it color coded to <laughs> yeah, where exactly. you can engage that and move on. G getting kind of new guys to work quicker, those advancements also save the, the veterans time yep. in the end as well. Yep. I mean, what's what's one of the biggest hot buttons right now is, is people, right? Yeah. How can we how can we get better people, get them on the job, help that whole whole industry and move us forward. And if we can get a, a unit that is simple, then I think that helps everyone in the sure. industry. So. All right, Jake, so we're here at the back of the truck. Take us through some of the advancements and some of the design changes that you've made to the VXT 300 back here. Yeah, so just to want to point out the, the actual door for the enclosure of the spool tank, that, that door has been tested over 20,000 cycle times. And it's a patent that has we've had at the South Carolina facility for years. And changing some of the linkages, beefing it up, making it more adaptable to this truck has given the, the ability for us to extend the patent. So the big key point of that is all the linkages, everything and all the mechanisms are outside the tank. So if you had anything inside the tank, it's gonna constantly get debris, it's gonna have the possibility of fail, but this is a proven component. And if, if we really look through the whole truck, the VXT8, we took those proven components, the blower, the filtration system that we talked about before, right. um, the water pump, uh, the, the door here, the boom, all of those key components were not ground up design, it was brought all together. Yeah. Um, but really one of the really great things the engineering team did is focused on this operator's control station. So, talk about the remotes. We've got two different style of remotes that are available. We've got a rocket remote. This usually is done on a job, used on a job where it's a single operator versus a belly pack remote where you might have two guys that are running the truck. One person is operating the boom, one person is operating the, the wand. So between those two, the great part about this is this easily paired and you can change between the two. So say you're out in the field and you really love this rocket remote. You like to clip it on your belt, press the buttons, and it's easy for you. And I might like the belly pack. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna have the belly pack. All it is is a, is a turn button and paired up oh, and cool. you're ready to go. So nice. it's, it's instant instant access to it. But so the engineers did a great job. Storage, we don't want these remotes rolling around no. the cab. They're not cheap. No. We don't want them sitting on the back of the fender getting no. run over. They're not, like I said, they're not cheap. But even like a docking station here, that has got a charger, extra batteries, just real thoughtful. Um, and all the operations here too, you get your basic information, you're able to operate if you do break your remote, run out of battery, you can still store your boom, turn off your machine, and then go to the next job. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. That's gonna wrap it up here from the Vermeer booth at Utility Expo 2021, and our look here at the VXT300. Again, thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for more news and announcements from the show. We'll see you in the next one.